as a mask to reveal the gradient through it with a raw thread of the character going behind. It's a good old blending mode tends to do the trick. Yeah, there we go. See, look how much life it's got now. E easy little trick. Good hello, welcome to Onion Skin, and this is what we are going to make. The working file for this project will be available for the Patreons as well. Link in the description if you want to check that out. Uh, the other day I was just sort of scribbling and this came out. I don't quite know, I guess it's an ant maybe? Yeah. But after it happened, I was like, gonna, gonna rig that. But I'm gonna try and document the whole process live as fast as I can. So let's begin. First of all, in the node view, need to create some new ones. There's gonna be ab abdomen, 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 vertebrae, bone. I'm just gonna call it bone. Um, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, let's do six just for just for the sake of it. Leg one, leg two, etc., etc. indeed, now they are all made. Put them all in a composite, spread them all out above the rough. Now time to go through and do all the cleanup. I'll be drawing on the line art sub layer with copy strokes to color art activated underneath. So it will automatically create the shapes that will be used for the fills. Because one question is, how many parts do I want these arms to have? I might make them multi-parted. I'm leaning on the shift key quite a lot, which gets straight lines and curvy lines all at once. I'm gonna do a full video on that soon, but for now, check this out. I go around, hold shift, straight, bounce off of it, do another straight bit again, around, bit of freehand, up, bounce on it again to get around corners, and there we go, leg drawn in one stroke, easy, easy. Okay, that's cleanup done already. Now to color it, I'm just gonna do a base color for the time being, just to quickly knock it out. Head down to the color art sub layer where I just see the strokes, and with the paint bucket set to paint unpainted on uh, I guess I'll just grab a bit of an earthy color for the time being. Close gaps onto two with paint all layers and bang. All right, that did most of it. That's great, that saved a lot of time. Next, I need to reshuffle the layer order to get everything ready to go. There's a lot of stuff that's sort of just all over the place. Remember, I made more layers than I needed to here. Like the last time I did this, I'm just gonna be grouping stuff into composites. Easy way to do that, I'll grab these three arm pieces there. See, they're sort of all over the place, but now, ah, grouped together, nice. Abdomen, one, two, three, four, five, and uh, now I'll leave the head off for now, but I'll composite those. Um, head, eyes, and antenna, they will get composited too. The abdomen's hiding one of the arm pieces, so I'll get rid of that. And now I can select these three pieces, composite them, and the two legs, composite them. Oh, looks like this hand didn't fill. There we go. Uh, and now, with everything composited correctly, I can get rid of the main one and get a pretty decent look at the structure of all of this. All of these composites themselves composited together and back down to the display. Auto patching and shading, that can come later. Now it's time to peg everything up properly. First I'll line up all the nodes, select everything and go Control Shift P for everything to get a peg. Next I'll go through and set up pivots for each thing. This is not a turnaround rig, it's just from one pose. Uh, so I'm gonna use the main pivots for these, which is these ones up here. Only thing that might be a bit weird to some of you is the pivot for the legs is at the bottom, not at the hips. That will become apparent soon. So checking out how these arms and hands move, you can see it's happening like that. And the neck parts, same sort of thing. So they need to be all connected together, right? Pretty simple character, don't need any bells and whistles again. So it's just gonna be sort of daisy chains like this. Hand. Arm, rest of arm, easy. 
Now these bones are going to be a bit trickier because it changes layer order halfway up the chain. You know, so we've got these three, they're pretty fine. Uh, so that's the base going that way. Uh, and then this one connects onto there. So it's going to go backwards like that. And then the head is connected to all of that chain. So all of these, they're sort of like mastered, right? Uh, so I'm going to group all of those together into one peg and then that gets parented underneath that top neck piece. There we go. This base piece is sort of like a root core for everything, right? All right, so this bone is where the arms come off. So it's also going to be connected down to those two arms. And this base one, well, the abdomen is the parent to that. And it's also the parent to both of the legs. So that's the basic chain for everything now set up. If I select the head and then press B to move up the hierarchy, there we go. And the more I press B, the further up the chain I will get. Some things are gonna need some sub pegs because this abdomen, right, it moves everything, everything. I want the abdomen to have a bit of independent swing where it can move everything but the legs and it can also move completely by itself. So it's gonna need one in there uh, and it's also going to need one here and here. We've got one of just the abdomen, one of the whole body save for the legs and a master for absolutely everything. Its pivot should be down on the ground. It'll also be named as such. Now to quickly set up the presets for everything. This is a huge step. I should do a video completely on this one thing where you select everything and at the top of the node view there is this button here, set properties on many layers. Press that and all of this comes up. This is the magic recipe, which I'll explain another time. Separate mode, parent peg, Animate using animation tools off, composite mode, pass through. All of those get changed and then bang. That is the make life a lot easier button, which I will keep mysterious for now because I have more rigging to do. Antennas will need curves or will they? It's easier to make wibbly things with bones as I've, as I've done a few videos on. So I'm gonna go uh, three bone nodes down each antenna like that with nice big articulations. Oh wait, it's on the wrong antenna. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's, that's curvaceous enough. It's interesting when it comes to those of you who may be following these as tutorials to try and learn out certain rigging methods because this is applicable for a very fast rudimentary build like this. It Some of the practices here are not standard uh, and those who are TV riggers might be sort of cringing at some of these methods. This is just because it's quicker for this particular character, this particular build. Something a little bit more in depth and intense is most certainly on the cards. Uh, okay, now the legs, I'm gonna do curves for them. Ah, oh, no, not curves, I'm gonna do envelopes. Envelopes are great because they don't have a root. They can be manipulated from both ends. Like this, stampy foot, separatey hip. Wonderful. Okay, main rig build process is done. Time to get back to some aesthetics. Auto patching for this arm. It will be one. Fortunately, everything was painted across the sub layers. So this arm can just go through an auto patch like that. There we go. Same for the other arm. I'll send the one at the back over the top of everything via the auto patch and that's uh, that works. Uh, let's see what it looks like for that middle arm piece. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, yeah, yeah, we'll keep that. This arm, it needs a little something for the top as well, doesn't it? Which would be its line art and its overlay layer. The line art for this thing will be going behind this bone, but its overlay layer going on top. But I need to set up what that overlay layer even is. It's going to be all of this artwork, copy and paste it across with just, with just this top cap removed. Yeah, there we go. 
I would like to give everything a shade, but I don't know if I have time for that really. So rather than do it by hand, let's just see how things look with a tone. Send everything through the tone and then I'll get the apply peg transformation, put that through the mask uh, with a peg and shift that to the side probably this way uh, and invert. It's like, it's it's sort of okay, but for things like this, these bones here, they need to show up as well. And some things pretty like would need to be affected differently or not at all. These legs are too thin, they're not really, they're not really compatible, blah, blah, blah. Also, I don't want a radius, I want it to be a nice hard edge like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with that in mind, I'm gonna use this little contraption as its own little shading machine. So if I just grip it all, then it's just gonna be my little shading machine. And I can take a whole bunk, bunch of them, put them through each individual vertebrae. Shapes of these bones are super weird, right? But because each one has its own thing, oh Jesus, can eat a bit of spaghetti. But because each one has its own thing, I, I can control it. Okay, base shadow set up for everything, uh, giving them all a little bit more spacious roominess. Uh, but there still needs to be a little bit more uh, dynamicness to the shade, right? Uh, I'm gonna do one of my favorite little shading tricks, which is to grab a gradient here. I'll make it radial, put it in front of everything, pop a peg inside to move it down to around about all here or whatever, and use the character as a mask to reveal the gradient through it with a raw thread of the character going behind and this top one usually just a just a good old blending mode tends to do the trick so we got add Dodge looks pretty good. Yeah, good old overlay. Nothing nothing beats that. Uh, what if it was rather than black if it had a bit of color? Blue or purple look like. Yeah, there we go. See, look how much life it's got now. E easy little trick. Now to animate the thing. I'm gonna collapse the master as everything does go back there to some point. Even due to these uh, peg transformations hanging off the edge, uh, they will move with the character. Gradient won't though, um, they will move with the character. If we grab it and hook it down to the gradient as well, uh, then even that will move with us too. So with it all collapsed, like, you know, each one is only exposed for one frame, uh, but I just go command four, put in a ridiculous number like 900, and now all of their exposures will go for much longer than I ever need them to. So rig based animation, don't need the node network so much from this point. Should just be a little bit of easy posing. I just want to do a little idle nothingness. So with everything collapsed, set up some main keys. Add a keyframe at frame one, and I'll put another one at like 120, like off the edge of the animation, just as insurance. So if I stuff something up, I can go get it. I reckon probably about a 30 frame loop or so. I'll put another keyframe in the middle and because I've keyframed it while it's collapsed, absolutely everything inside that can receive a keyframe has done so. So I can feel free to pose this thing without worrying about accidentally leaving something behind. So what do I want? I want to grab the whole thing and sort of just bend it down a little bit. Have that twist up. Start with the head in its entirety. I think I sort of just want everything to curl in. So I'm just going to keep Pressing the B key as I like accordion the whole character downwards. How does that look? Whoa! Crazy. It's not too bad. I'll send the arm up though because it needs to sort of tilt up like this. Probably should have put a deformer in that forearm so I could squash the whole thing in. Um, I might do that a bit later if I can be bothered. Okay, so I got this going. Now I want to give it a little bit of a delay. You've probably seen me use this trick before, which is to nudge everything out in the hierarchy by one. So let's see what happens if I do this. Working down each layer, nudging them all forwards by one frame with extent exposure. Uh, what if it's by two frames? 
Okay. Okay, that's getting somewhere. Oh my. I took a break. 11 months ago. See, animating very tweeny like this isn't really uh, much of a thing these days. Better to animate precise and well. <laughs> but this thing was built with tweeny stuff in mind. So you know what? Screw it. Let's embrace it and see how much out of just two keys spaced far apart like this, how much mileage can I get from them? It's the first thing I never got round to. Align the hips. Uh, the whole leg is in only one piece for some reason, so moving the ankles is out of the question. The foot will move with it. Fortunately, there's enough give in the hip to get it to all stick still. I'm glad I used bones on the antenna. That Each movement can build up upon the last, which is quite nice. Now for the eyes. These are going to be drawing substitutions. I did a first duplicate, draw a line straight through for like a half blink. And then it's just going to be a matter of using the cutter tool and paint bucket and things to sort of trim off all of the excess. Same thing for the one straight down the middle. I use a duplicate of a halfway done eyes just to be able to see them all together at the same time. I'll clear these exposures after they're done. It's just to get the three images in there and ready and I'll start setting up their poses later. The mouth, the pincer things, very similar to the eyes. They are going to comprise of four substitutions. It's not necessarily redrawn, but using the cutter to grab the pieces that I need, open it all the way up and then use brush tool and whatever I need to uh, fill in the gaps. Decided to do the outermost one first and rather than a direct in-between, uh, there's two in-betweens so that are like eased, you know, like leaning towards the front and the end. Same as the eyes, these substitutions will just live inside the head so it can open and close its mouth randomly once we get the main movement down. The accordion spine movement from earlier ended up only being uh, one frame shifted each way, but there was a 50% ease applied to absolutely everything, so it felt nice and smooth. Now for the arms, uh, they became unsynced with the spine, but that was a bit of a happy accident. It looks like they're swinging to and fro in reaction to it. So I want to lean into that and give the elbows a little bit more emphasis. And then I swung the hands out quite considerably as well. These just being daisy chained, there's no deformers or anything. So it's a simple matter of using the transform tool to rotate it. That's all of the key movement done. And now for the blinks. I quite like having blinks be just a single in between, sometimes two, uh, but the transitions will just be one frame and then holds closed for two frames and then opens back up again. Using the drawing substitutions window is just a quick matter of selecting each one. Very, very quick to do, uh, but I displaced the two eyes off by one frame just to give it a bit of a derp. The timing of the blinks for each other are a bit sporadic as well. One space far apart and then two blinks right next to each other. Helps it feel less robotic. Similar thing for the mouth pincers as well. Like they just open a little bit to start and then do the full mouth later on. There we go. Don't know why it took me so long to get around to finishing this. Uh, this last portion where I've clearly gone into commentating in post mode and the timer is gone. Uh, that was approximately just shy of 30 minutes to do. But it was nice to knuckle down and focus in on it. I hope you like the results. And as always, a working files available to the Patreons if you want to get in. Have a go at this thing yourself. Bye. Thanks for watching. Consider following my Twitter for upcoming stream times and topics. Hey, maybe your question or suggestion or whatever will become a video topic of its own like this one. Previous unedited full streams, as well as any relevant working files if there happens to be any, are available to my lovely patrons. Links for all that stuff and that are in the description. Yay. Okay, bye.